Welcome to a new episode of Off Balance. Today we're doing a three-way. Yes. We have Pio is back. I'm back. I was sick. Welcome back. Thank you. And Corey Guitar, special guest. Yes. It's... Guitar, is that a French name actually? It is uh, Acadian. Acadian, actually. really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So how do you how do you say it? Like do you say it with like guitar or guitar? So the thing with those names is like they they've been mixed around and changed so much yeah, that I couldn't honestly tell you. And like I grew up, my friends were mostly English, so you know, guitar. Yeah, guitar for but sure. Because there was a D, a guitar. D right? yeah. yeah, guitar. Yeah. Uh, do you have family from like New Brunswick or something? Yeah. So my uh, my whole family on my father's side is uh, is Acadian, and uh, my dad is the thirteenth. That is child true. what yeah so oh they have a God. they have a pretty crazy upbringing like my yeah. my dad grew up in a house without um without uh like a a bathroom um no uh no fridge that's crazy yeah cold enough to keep things uh yeah well they had a, a a wood stove and they hunted and fished for their food that's Damn. sick yeah my dad learned to read when he was 26 that what that is yeah. so crazy that's a crazy story we should get your dad on here yeah you should, <laughs> yeah, you should. he's sure. far more interesting than me yeah. <laughs> no, come on. wait which part uh, of canada is that it's up north was it was it new this brunswick is in the maritime or? so this is oh, in new, new brunswick, brunswick. Yeah. yeah primarily yeah, new brunswick yeah. Yeah. We're, we're in new brunswick i'm just uh curious so uh they're in uh, point vera which nobody would know what that is but near bathurst okay does yeah, that make yeah, sense for sure yeah. absolutely yeah and so the thing is like um they can, so for you oliver the, the acadians are were uh, French people who came over here pretty early, right? And then when the English won the war here, they expelled them. Damn. So many of them went down to Louisiana and were partly responsible for founding like, ca uh, Cajun. That's culture. why you have places like uh, Lafayette, and mm -hmm. uh, they're they're like French name in in America, but it's actually Acadian that were uh, deported almost, so they had to they had to leave. Right, and some of these people never left. So what they did was when they were deported, they went and lived in the woods. Yeah for like 50, 60 years. So that's why they're so rugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Damn, the funny thing is to hear them pronounce these names now. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Lafayette. Lafayette. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lafayette. I'll just say, they lost, they lost their, uh, their French accent. Lafayette. Yeah. Uh, I the mean, French even, is different too, though, yeah, right? Yeah, like, dude, we, ha we have a guy at the gym, Jeannot. He's, he's Acadian, too. That's why he has such a strong accent. If he puts yeah. it on, you probably wouldn't even... I have a hard time understanding yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, in French? Like when he yeah. speaks French? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's my it's my first language. <laughs> Crazy. It's hardcore. Uh, just so people know, like Corey is a 10 Planet Black yeah. Belt from Montreal. He's a uh, one of the head coach. Yeah, obviously. Like, That's just repping. Yeah, and I, I like coach, that shirt, yeah. man. Thanks. Montreal established 2009. Just copied AOJ. <laughs> Looks good. It doesn't matter. Doesn't That's can't it. tell. Uh, but but just so people know who we're talking to, yeah. yeah uh, and I I believe you're a uh, you're a head coach or assistant coach. Maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, what, so Lu your... Lewis Ho is the head coach. He's yeah. a he's a black belt under Eddie, and yeah. he started the school. And I'm his assistant head coach. I started training under. And him. are you a black belt under Louis? I'm a black belt under Louis. That's yeah. amazing. That's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Yeah. How um, many how many tenth planets are there now in Quebec? In Quebec, there are three. They're they're all under us. Though. So we have our main location. Then we have two smaller locations: one in Shattagee and one in the West Island. Jeez. Yeah, and there's like a, a hundred. I think there's like 120 worldwide now. So it's it's popular. I think it's a it's a franchise, right? And it's one of the first franchises to uh, be. Um, it's American. Yeah, so I think that that helps it spread quite a bit because it's accessible. You know, like you got to think like we talk about like all like there's and there are so many but great teachers and all this like it's so much of it's in Portuguese it's not accessible to people. So no, like sometimes true. you'll be like oh you know we, we focus in on the great American teachers and there are great American teachers, but imagine like sometimes I question I think to myself like fuck if you could speak Portuguese you might have different opinions too. You might like watch material and be blown away by it but of course. when you watch someone teach it in their second language it's not it's not the same no La of course man. language makes a huge 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 difference man yeah, huge yeah. difference like the, the when when a brazilian guy comes here to teach it's not not very easy for him no it's hard to imagine okay so you you speak how many languages i'm i english and my french is not very good so i'm like imagine trying to pick One up a, a girl <laughs> in in a language you're not too like comfortable with. Just trying to pick up a girl would be hard enough. Hard. I mean, she might appreciate <laughs> the fact that you you're putting in the effort and it's say, cute and you have yeah, an accent yeah. and and all that. But if you have to teach a class and yeah. you're not, it's different. It's hard. Yeah, totally. Sure. Totally. You know what's funny yeah. is uh, like I was saying, 
first language for me is French. And uh, I went recently, like two weeks ago, to Quebec City to te teach a seminar. And it was actually my first seminar in French. And what was stressing me the most was actually having to teach in French. Yeah. And I'm used to teach every day in English. And I'm used to the term in English and everything. So it's actually like the language barrier can be like pretty stressful. And think actually. about all, all the terms we have, like, that have be especially in the past few years, like so many, so much more language is being <laughs> operation. No, no, no. Well, <laughs> and, and that's a big part of it, though. No, and that's a good thing nice too. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah. What I mean, about the tenth planet names? The cock meat sandwich. Or... <laughs> those are real. So uh, those yeah. are uh... sandwich à la viande. Uh... <laughs> I think I think those can present. Uh... <laughs> they're esoteric, so the the their advantage in those is that you only know them if you've been taught them that way specifically yeah. by that coach. So that's the disadvantage is it's it's not always easy to learn. No, no you know sure. it's not. And when you have a word that means something, uh, a good example is underhook, which is like a super common word, but try to say it in French. It doesn't exist. Underhook does not exist. So how many words? that you're using commonly you don't have so many yeah so many so when you get to teach in a, another language you're like oh i gotta explain what it is yeah instead. and it's way longer now or you can make shit up be an innovator mm. i could you I could, could. Yeah. think about it there's not that much french language instruction no, there's not the the, the funniest a lot of people speak french you just gave me an idea i know uh, probably should have kept it for myself but now it's yeah, yours yeah, yeah but your, your your french is I, shitty i so know you need me and i do i do <laughs> and actually you have a couple of guys at your gym that could do that <laughs> yeah yeah we do, we do. too late but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a thing it's i'm for real like you don't think we have so, it's so much competition out there in english instruction and yet it, there's a lot of languages that is so true yeah. man i had that experience once when i taught a, a workshop in florence yeah, I I got yeah I went there and nobody spoke English really well. So the guy's like, I'll translate for you. Don't worry, I got you. It was like, cool, this is awesome. Turns out, man, the guy wanted to be like the superstar of the seminar. Man, I'd say, all right, so we're gonna come and grab the arm. The guy for two minutes. Allora, io prendo. Na, 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 na. Very Italian. Man, this yeah. is pr <laughs> and then probably that's not what I was saying. You know what I mean? So <laughs> language can be. Yeah, it can he's, be a barrier for sure. He's probably talking shit about you. He's yeah, probably yeah. saying something completely remixed, <laughs> and it was just somehow they got the move right. So maybe I'm just I'm just being the vi visual learners. Yeah, probably. Yeah, the visual learners. For so, sure. uh, Corey, you, you've been uh, you're uh, not only teaching a lot because mm -hmm. I know your schedule because we we get to train from time to time yeah, together. Yeah. You come at TriStar on Mondays. I do, which we all appreciate. By the way, oh, it's it's it's. it's I'm very nice grateful for a, the opportunity. Yeah. Oh, it's good, man. It's good for us. It's like uh, it's good for everybody. Um, and you've been teaching a lot, I know, because sometimes you, you you actually come to Mizu Open Mind. Yeah, like, I try to. You do like six, eight rounds in a row, and you're like, I got to run to teach. I'm like, fuck that guy. He's, <laughs> he's, he's nonstop. And uh, you've been competing, yeah. too, a lot, I believe, uh, yeah. in the last two years. I think you've posted um, uh, a year recap or something like that on your Instagram. Yeah. And there were some numbers. In the past two years, I've co uh, competed 27 times. Damn. Sick. It's a um, lot, man. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because at first it's like, and I'm sure, I mean, like, honestly, part of it was watching some of you guys. Like, I was, um, I was working, so I'll, I'll give you, like, I was in grad school when I started jujitsu, So yeah, I didn't, yeah. I, I wasn't training. Yeah, let's super. get the background. Yeah. Where, where were you, you studying? From? Yeah. I was studying at Concordia, and I was studying uh, political science and economics. Okay. My man. Yeah. I studied the same thing. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Drop out, or did you finish? But no, I did finish. I'm oh. a dropout. I did finish, but... Uh, by the time I finished, I was, uh, like, disenfranchised. Like, did not want to do that anymore. I, I wanted to teach, and uh, but I wasn't super interested in the material anymore. And so I worked in the private sector for, like, six months, and I didn't like it. So I decided, like, I just talked to my girlfriend at the time, my wife now, and I was like, I'm, I think I'm just going to go back to working in a bar, and I'm going to change. So that's what I did. I started bartending again, and I, I trained for three years bartending at night. And then three years ago, so that's six years ago now almost, I quit and was able to to uh, train and compete full-time and teach full-time. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing, it, man. Making it's, a living from it. It's a dream. <laughs> yeah, it's a dream. And what? I mean, the, the, live, the living comes mostly from the work behind the scenes. Like, the work for jujitsu is sort of just a barrier to entry, you know, like you have to train enough and be at least good enough that people will listen to you. Yeah, of mm -hmm, course. Yeah. But then it's all the stuff behind the scenes, like, like this guy's doing right now. That, Valerio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Also known as the Soviet tank. Yeah. yeah Pavel. He's a beast. Soviet it, tank. That's the stuff that holds yeah. your gym together. And so, so. Which is yeah. a lot of work that we actually don't know a lot about because we're not running gyms. Yeah, you will. One day. Yeah. Probably. Hopefully. Will. For yeah, sure. But, but that's, that's interesting yeah. to us, you know? And, and that's the part I think where people quit. So I think yeah. everybody wants to do jujitsu for a living because they see someone train two to four hours a day and they think like, this is great. And it is great. It is. Yeah. But if that was all it was, everyone would be doing it. Yeah. For sure. You know, like what, what did you do in the private sector? Um, so I was doing, it's called program design. So like, and then I didn't do a lot of it. I did it about six months, but I would go in and help a company design a program similar to how I would have done if I was in the public sector, it would have been a policy. So okay, instead yeah. of a policy, I'm helping you. Like, let's say you want to have a green green program, you know? I would help design that. So I did that for, like, two different companies. And I was, at that point, I was like, man, it's just not, it's just not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so, like, back to what I was saying with you guys, I, I saw you, you three, you two and Ethan, like, competing so, so, so much. And I was like, man, like, all right, that's how you do that. You just go out and, like, you don't just wait for the competitions to come. You, you go out and you, mm -hmm. you go find them. yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And I think it being illegal here too, that I'm sure we'll get into that. Oh, but yeah, we will. Like yeah, sure. that, as there's disadvantages. The advantages is like it pushes the people who really want it to go get it. Mm, yeah, know? that's true. That's so, a good way to see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then at some point it changed. It wasn't like at first I was like getting tired. I'm like pushing myself. I'm like trying to compete all the time. And then it became therapy. Yeah. And then now yeah, it's almost like so I was working towards like getting to this point where I wouldn't have to compete as much, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now like I'm 33 and I see that like I won't be doing this forever. So you're actually enjoying it. And now I'm like fuck, I compete every weekend just because it's, you know, we live once. Yeah, so, that's man. Like, that's, a, that's amazing like that shift that you had. It's that's weird. <laughs> we'll it put, is weird. We'll, yeah. We'll put you on the best GH therapy, man. You'll compete till you're 50. <laughs> you're good. Yeah, dude. No worries. You'll be 52. <laughs> You're 52. Still, still crushing. Still winning Master 1. By the way, <laughs> you did win Pan's Master 1. Right? I won Pan's Master 1, yeah. Black belt. Uh, brown belt. Brown belt. Yeah. That's a, that's a good achievement, man. Yeah, I mean, it, I, it, it, like, I do things backwards, I guess. Like, now I'm trying to compete at adult in the same, in the black belt category. And I kind of worked my, a, my confidence up by being like, okay, well, I'm 31. I'll do my category. And yeah, then I won sure. it. And I was like, all right, well, I'll. Try to do more. Let, let's get, let's do yeah. like harder stuff. Let's, yeah, let's see. That, that's that's a good way to, to do it. Like building the confidence. Yeah, which yeah. is like like that's the thing, right? Uh, uh, with competing in locals, like it, which suck because it's illegal here. Because yeah, like guys they have to travel and build their confidence, mm -hmm. which is expensive. Yeah, unless you're working in bars and making that good money. Which bars did you work? In? Um, I worked for a bunch of years at Typhoon, uh, Typhoon. in NDG. I don't know. Yeah, because it's NDG, I don't know. Yeah, That's it's... Yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not very familiar with the... Uh, with the There's area. not that many places an Anglophone bartender can get a job. So, yeah. it, the Monkland Village is uh, one of the more Anglophone spots. In, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, see yeah. where it is. I've just never been, yeah. yeah. It's it, cool. Man, yeah. it's... Uh, for a dude to get a bartending job is pretty tough. Yeah, I was lucky because I didn't even... I didn't go to bartending school or anything like that. I just... How'd you get the job? I was bouncing and they needed a bartender. One You're like, night. I can I was flip like, some drinks. I was like, I'll do it. And I yeah. went out and did it. And uh, it's actually really... It's a hard job. Yeah, man. It looks, it's it looks, tough. He, he did work in... Uh, uh, in um, I started from like... A restaurant, right? uh, Shining uh, wine cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shining wine cups, switching garbage bags, yeah. mopping floors. High pressure jobs because like man. everything has to be done now and yeah. right. Man, people get on like uh, people get on speed, or they they get on they like, get they get on like uh, certain drugs or whatever they take. They'll make them go for hours without a break. What what's that drug called? I I mean, I there's a lot of cocaine. In, yeah, there's the a lot of cocaine industry. in that industry. Yeah. Cocaine. It's like huh? People start yeah. drinking because it's like it it relaxes you, and yeah. now you're easier with the clients. Make and more money. And now, <laughs> when you have your down on alcohol, what what happens? You need some coke. Yeah, push you back. Unfortunately, up. boom. Oh, that's pretty bad. Yeah, the industry is not a healthy one. Yeah, no. you know, like you make a lot of money and yeah, but tough culture in there. Tough culture. Like, well, everyone, your work hours coincide with other people sleep. who have those hours, yeah. and everyone else is sleeping. Uh -huh. So if you want to have a social life, your social life tends. And I didn't, so it was fine. Like I went home every night, but that's a lot of my man. peers, you know, their only way to hang out is to get blasted after work, and that becomes uh, a habit. Man, so, I remember after after work, like we'd be. We'd be mopping the floor. We'd find like these uh, little, little tiny bags with like 
white powder in them. Yeah. And it's like, cocaine, my friend. yeah, yeah. And then we'd finish. It'd be, it'd be like sunny outside. We'd go, uh, we'd go up a couple of blocks, grab like uh, chow mein for two dollars. Yeah, These Chinese would still be up at seven a.m. Yeah, serving like, chow uh, mein for like, for the bus boys, and they do that on too. on Saint Laurent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and I'd it, bike back home all the way to the <laughs> west. It was the, the best. Me, I know like, the chow mein stand you're talking about. Yeah, it's the best, man. It is two it's bucks. Cheap hits the spot. Right. Boom, you're good to go after. Yeah, yeah. better than McDonald's. Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, better than Bonkies was pretty good. Bonkeys yeah. was pretty but good. There was a yeah. lineup now. Maybe not at 4 a.m. At 7 a.m. Oh, there's still a lineup before. Forget 4. 7 a.m. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd be there at 7 for breakfast, man. It's crazy. And they yeah. got they got some big bouncers there, too. For, yeah. For a poutine spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it's the most busy poutine <laughs> for spot. For sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> got to fight for that poutine, man. Yeah. That's yeah. how good it is. <laughs> man, that's sick. That's, that's sick. Amazing, but, man. dude, it's not it's not a healthy environment at all. No, no. And I was very happy. Like, mm. How long did you do it? Um, you, so on and off, I mean, okay, I worked in bars on and off my whole life. I started, uh, uh, busboying when I was 15. Okay. Yeah. Oof, early. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. They would hide me in the beer fridge when the cops would come in. No they, yeah. They'd go sit in there for like 20 Beer minutes. fridge, huh? Look, that's yeah. so sick. Fucking pigs. Yeah. <laughs> so pigs. then, then I, uh, I started working as a bouncer when I started college again and, and, on and off like if i got a good ra or ta job like i would yeah. maybe work in the bar a little less but it was semester to semester so. yeah man the shady stuff that they do in that in that environment oh yeah i'm yeah. not gonna say which bar but man there was a bar at some point i won't say which bar we let's say there's bottle service we get an order i was bar back after i was bus boy i yeah. started bar back so you're like the bus boy behind the bar mm -hmm. And then mm. I was taking care of bottle service too. I had my little yeah, yeah. my little corner with all the little sh the little how do you call that the sparklers the the I forget all the words. Yeah. But anyways, once I see like a, a magnum of Belvedere and we didn't have any, and then it was a time where the bar was like struggling a bit, right? Because they had come during F one, and because it was like run by mobsters and whatnot, yeah, like everybody. So the cops, <laughs> the cops, the eclipse or whatever, they come and try to try to wreck their stuff, like yeah. really ruin their day. So. We were low on, they were like doing bad. So manager comes, he's like, listen, we don't have, a, we have a, we have like an open uh, Belvedere, like a big one. I was like, okay, what do you want me to do? He's like, take this vodka and then fill it. Fill the other oh, bottle yeah, up, yeah. put it in. I'm like, oh my God, what a peg. <laughs> yeah. It's it's unhealthy, man. And then the after hours, the people that are at the bar, the after hours is not necessarily the the wisest people out there. No, I mean, listen, everyone's a, a person and, and but just you don't have to be one of them. No. That's all. Yeah, you know, exactly. like 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 mm -hmm. I, I feel for people that are struggling, mm -hmm. you know, of course. But if you're trying to like get get your goals yeah. handled, then you can't be in those environments. The no, other no, trap. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. It's too easy it's to a trap. fall. Yeah, it's a, it yeah. is a trap. The yeah. trap is the money because it's so yes. much money that yeah. you're making, especially here. Here, tip is good. Yeah, 400 bucks in a night cash is yeah, you walk nice. up, you're Pretty like, good. okay, I can do this again tomorrow, after tomorrow, F1. Yeah. New, I'm sure New Year's, man. I was actually thinking about it on the way home. Uh, the other day, I'm like, man, bars right now are probably fired up about the night they're about to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you make most of your money on those the holidays on those big like that, nights yeah. or, you know, big hockey game. or Like, okay, so here's a big one. When, when the Habs make the playoffs, like, the amount of money that the city, the economy makes is, is dramatically different than when they don't. Oh, yeah. And it's just because people go out everything to bars up. to watch everything. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And they drink. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Sucks that we didn't win the cup since 1993. <laughs> Hopefully one day with Jits, we can have the playoffs and things like that. And yeah, Well, you know, like, yeah, if you think great. in the States right now, you got, I mean, New York and California are the big meccas, and then Florida and Texas are... Getting pretty getting big. pretty damn big. Yep. But after those four, I would honestly say we can compete with any other state in the United States in terms yeah. of talent. Maybe not volume, mm. but but level. Man, we, we got some good guys. Yeah. Volume. Yeah. There are a lot of. Yeah. Think about how many schools there are here. Teams. Yeah. There are a bunch. Yeah. And and a lot of people now moving their way out to compete at the international stage, which is yeah. wicked. Good example. The last uh, uh, guest we had, uh, Brianna. She she won. She's ranked number one in the world right now. Yeah. She won world champion. Uh, she's a world champion and then a double go at hand. Yeah. She's from Montreal. Yeah. She's from around here. Insane. It's yeah. It's insane. Repping. It's good, man. More and more people like yeah. that. ADCC, uh, we had some, we had Ethan on it. This uh, guy, Taza. Yeah, well, man, you, and you, Ethan you, won the, you won the European trials, right? Yeah. You've been to ADCC. You won, uh, I did four been, trials. You won the worlds too, <laughs> no, at Brown Belt? Uh, won the yeah. worlds at Brown Belt. Yeah. Yeah. Man. That's good. 
I want to do a lot more. This year, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is all it's wicked stuff, man. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll it'll pick up slowly. One guy that crushed it. Speaking of ADCC, is Eddie Bravo against? Uh, well, he the, one of the Gracies. Yeah, so Hoyler. he won the American Trials, and then he beat Hoyler. At the time, Hoyler was under. I don't think he had ever had a point scored on him in ADCC. And I think Hoyler won ADCC three three times. That's insane. So yeah, yeah like that. it was. That's the thing. Like Eddie's one of those guys that like he's and in person too. He's such a goofball. Yeah, have you met you know, him a couple of times? Many times. <laughs> yeah, many for times. sure, for sure. So, and like you get to train with him. Or? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's like he man. He's injured a lot. He's had shoulder surgery, yeah, so I haven't got to train up, with him yeah. a lot. But I've gotten to take a lot of his classes, like, and I've gotten there. to hang with him a lot. And like I got to hang with him a lot outside of classes yeah. with Lewis. And like, um, like I said. A very interesting, especially from someone like me who comes from like a traditional education background, like, yeah. like he's a character, man. But I can tell you honestly, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. I'm sure he, lo- sure. he looks you really know? nice. He looks sure. all over the place a bit. Yeah, super, all, super <laughs> but, eccentric. But, <laughs> but that's that's okay. It's his personality. <laughs> but do, you have, do you have some stories? About yeah, that? I'm, I'm just I'm remembering ready. the rules meeting when I did EBI. The yeah. rules meeting with Eddie. Going. It was. Dude, it was the best. It was the it was a show, man. Well, you've seen him change rules on the flight, but here's the thing, too. You gotta give him <laughs> you gotta give him credit because there's not many people that achieve a lot that take advice. Like I've seen him in the middle of a rules meeting be like, okay, well, with the slams, this, and someone's like, no, no, no. He goes, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, we're yeah, gonna yeah, switch yeah, that. And I'm like, he, open minded. He's very open minded. Very open. I know. Uh, Thru- open. Thru- Thru- <laughs> has been with him a couple of times. Yeah, he would say like he would actually enjoy discussing about like they're trying to find like the best jujitsu rule set, and they're just like. They're yeah, sh- shooting the shit. Yeah, shooting the shit. Yeah. Exactly. Just trying it out. That's cool. That's and I sure. can say one thing that I think is really cool about him uh, is the support he gives to students that aren't even close to him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah like I if you want to get on an event and you're one of his students and you're putting in work and you message him and you're like, can you help me get on the event? He'll get you on the event. And he has a huge hey, reach. Hey, yeah. Right? My man. Sorry? He has a huge reach, right? He, huge reach. Like, Big following, and and I've seen him post about like his student often. Share and, reshares our yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, He's exactly. really involved. You and know, you guys which is are cool. like the probably the northern nordest head planet you can find. Yeah, yeah. First in uh, Canada, and and I sick. mean, yeah. That's Lewis amazing. was the first, the first tenth planet black belt in Canada. I mean, man, Lewis. Uh, so Lewis got his blue belt from Hoist Gracie. Did he? He was driving to New York oh. back in the fucking like late '90s, early 2000s. Yeah, mm-hmm. to get it from Hoist Gracie. That he was so driving cool. to take privates from Carlos Newton in Ontario. Like he was he reaching it. out for it. Yeah, and then um, he was Eddie's like 14th black belt. So he's been with him since the beginning, almost since yeah, the beginning. He's, he's one yeah. of the early guy, right? Yeah, man. One of the things that I really like Eddie from watching the. Uh, the Matter Morris, obviously the rematch he had with mm. the, the Gracie, yeah. but also the 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 preview, like the hype. The the episode was basically um it was Hoist? Uh, the the, re, the Hoyler, rematch Hoyler. was Hoyler. Yeah. Well Ho- they were both Hoyler. So yeah. they're they're like comparing their like a day with Hoyler, a day with <laughs> Eddie. The day with Hoyler is him wakes up, do like an uh, an hour of mobility, then yeah. does his watermelon juice yeah. <laughs> with like 14 different yeah. steps, healthy life and all that. And then Eddie's just chilling. He goes to the studio, kicks, smokes a joint, rips the bunk. And then the match, man, speaks for itself. There's not much we can do. So cool. It was no, such a yeah. sick match. It was a, it was a wicked match. And yeah. I mean, Hoy- I mean, Hoyler's a tough dude. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, for sure. His he, knee got wrecked and he didn't show a single ounce yeah. of of, uh, of pain in his face. Man, his hamstring probably got pretty stretched out too. Bro, his poker face is legit. Because that, that his knee got torqued in every direction. And, mm. and But... I guess when you win three ADCCs, you yeah, for sure he's tough. He's he's from that. that you got that medal. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like it's mental, you know. I uh, think so, that yeah. was a good match, man. I remember watching that. That was probably one of the first yeah. Salon Lee. They probably they probably watched. didn't they probably didn't get paid for it. But. No, <laughs> speaking of not getting paid, that doesn't get paid. Yeah, he owes from Metamoris. Yeah, he uh, owes myself and Ethan, I think, too. He owes us a flight and five hundred US. Well, you which know, could go a long way nowadays, isn't it? Producing rap videos is an expensive business. So. Yeah, for sure. Of course, of course. Yeah. So let me ask you one question. You guys have uh, you told me you have three three yeah. different tenth plans. You guys get together and train. How yeah, often do you do totally. that? Um, well, so if you have a membership at one, it's good at all of them in, in the world. 
So, sick. What? Yeah, yeah. So you can go to anyone in the world. That is amazing. That is yeah. so I sick. I didn't, I didn't know that. That's yeah. so cool. So you can just be visiting anyway. whatever 10 planet. Anyway. Yeah. That's nice, man. Yeah. That's so a, a good cool, idea. How many schools there is? Hundred. I think 120. Don't quote me, but it's what? close to that. Yeah. That's pretty sick. So you guys get yeah. together, all three 10th planets, and train? Yeah. So we have, and we also have like, so we have Christmas parties and summer parties. It's like, you know, it's, for me, it's, it's my family. <clears> and, um, and we have like we try to encourage people to come to our open mats. We have seminars. We I mean I've aggressively brought in people for seminars since like the first day that I, I took over managing the gym because, I, like I remember bringing in Mancher Kara in like 2015. Yeah, you know like, I remember I remember that. Yeah, because he had like a nasty single X game and like like oh, he's, didn't he's use it. Good. Yeah, but he at the time he wasn't using it for heel hooks, right? He was using it for sweeps, but yeah. it was still nobody was doing that. Yeah, I mean, it's the I Marcelo remember. Garcia way, right? But he adapted it. Like, he was yeah, using yeah. Kani Basami, like, way back. Oh, yeah. But he really. wasn't using it to get not, on the heels. Mm -hmm. He was sweep. just using it to sweep the way Gordon will use it today at Pants. I know? remember. I remember I remember training at Marcelo's, actually, before I heard of Henzo's. And uh, I remember training with, with Munch, and man, he had really good single like Yeah. Then I saw you had brought him in. I was like, damn, that's a sick, sick, uh, sick idea. So we try to get people... We try to get the whole squad to come out and and support seminars and just come to open mats and like the more people get to know each other the better and, yeah, and that's yeah. all this really is for me like I, I love competing I love jujitsu but like it's the finding something to connect with people the community behind yeah. it I have an idea for you there's a uh, you guys are doing the quintet we're doing it too actually yeah yeah I know Mike, it's gonna be sick. it's gonna be sick man yeah, February eight yeah well they they got uh, Detroit Jiu Jitsu out there too yeah and they're a super strong team so like yeah and, I think they're bringing people from from other places too. Awesome. Well, you know with quintets, everybody's yeah, like, yeah. Well, yeah. this is my team, but it's like the five best guys I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Are you thinking of bringing in maybe somebody from... Nah, and I mean, we're not against it. I don't care. And I'm always like happy to face and to have be able to have my students face the best people sure. possible. That's a good thing. I don't really care about winning. Or okay, everyone wants to win. Yeah. You know, but ultimately like like the path that we're on... the experience. It's, yeah, it's irrelevant in the end. You yeah, know? Yeah, I know what you mean. And, and so... Um, I'm I'm happy to go out there with the people that I train with because I train with them every day. We have one guy that is going to be from another school because he had some shit go down with his coach and he doesn't have a coach. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that, that's Chris Crawford. Uh, so he's like a, a ten planet guy, but he's like a Ronin. He's yeah, I'm going around. Sure I heard that. He's at everything. Yeah, yeah, you know, this kid's at everything, and I see him at everything. I go to finishers. He's there. I go to California. Yeah, he's yeah. fucking. I turn around. This kid's there. So I'm sure, I've seen him. He's a purple belt, and he's like just. When I saw how hard he was working to like do this on his own, and I know how difficult that can be, I was like, "All right, jump on! You jump on our team." And mm -hmm. so That's he's cool. going to be on our team for the the finishers quintet. Okay, yeah, the, the one forty five. Yeah, but yeah. for the other quintet, it's it's our same five guys. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, sick, okay. yeah. sick man. Yeah, we're doing trials today. Actually, later yeah. today, we're doing. So uh, there's one. So one your last team is but competing for it. That's the yeah, best. yeah. So so we decided uh, to uh, to make a trial for it. Like yeah. so, right? Who are the first four? You so two, Ethan. Uh, yeah, Ethan and uh, Javad. Javad is. Uh, oh yeah, I know. Don't don't spoil. Don't spoil. <laughs> I, 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 I rolled with this guy. I know. I know. Oh, yeah. right? uh, you've trained with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, what yeah. an idea let's to have say, this guy on the just team. Just he's a big strong guy. Let's just say <laughs> if he's not pulling guard, it's gonna be a problem. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never so trained with him to be honest. Oh, he's a yeah. That's a team dude. so far. Uh, so we have one spot left open. So some guys wanted it. So we're like. All right, let's do a trials. Yeah, that's awesome. We're gonna film it, and uh, it's gonna probably be on Faraz's channel. Oh, that's cool. Hopefully, so you guys will be able to see it. Yeah, and, you might uh, have to do the same thing. It's, I, it's gonna create some hype for the mm -hmm. for the event too. It's gonna be fun. Yeah, and the, these these events are good. Like the last, I mean, I shouldn't even get into it, but the last one was uh, fireworks. Oh yeah, at, yeah uh, there was some fireworks there. Well, there were. Which, which last one? <laughs> So the, we 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 were facing Team Nova Nova and Yao. Oh, was, with Sims. Yeah, the yeah. Sims brothers. Ooh, what happened? Uh, there we was had some shit going on. It right? was it was a what very kind of tight, very close match. Yeah, sick. There was a lot of shit talk leading up to it, uh, coming mostly just mostly from Sims from Wang. No, it wasn't even from the Sims. They they talked some shit after we had a thing going with them, but it was honestly it was I like those guys. So I was more Me like too. having fun. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty friend with those I guys. I love They're Sims, fun. man. Yeah, yeah. He's so funny, this guy. Yeah. You hang out with him, he's the funniest guy. And the, both they're the both murderers, are. too. They, oh, yeah. They're two of the stiffest, strongest so dudes that I've ever felt in my life. I know. Have some, something I know. I know. And on, on their Instagram the other day, they were doing like uh, those, uh, uh, muscle kipping up pull-ups. Yeah. Like, like they were doing a challenge. Like, just dude. like do 12 in a row. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, <laughs> they look like tanks, those guys. Yeah. So how'd it go? Well, we ended up... 
uh, winning a. It was it was very close. It was like a bunch of DQs. DQs. In, well, DQs. like double DQs or like draws. Draws. Oh, yeah, for quintets. Draws. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're, so they're DQs. Yeah. That. Mm. So there was f- five. Nobody subbed anybody, but it was. But there were, some of the matches were pretty action packed. And then in the finals, it was me and Steve Sims in an EBI overtime. So, okay. Yeah. Sims. Yeah, and it was very like again close. Super tight. It, yeah. Was it, uh, like on the skates. Yeah, it was a skate. Exactly. Okay, right so it's one of those now. things where, like, we were super happy to get the win. Course, and we yeah. got the win. We did what we had to do. But, you know, it's a, like those are rule sets that we come up to produce a winner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Sure, so sure. it was a very, very, in terms of, of skill, it was very close. In some matches, they had the, the lead most of the match. Some matches, we had the lead the whole. Yeah, of course. Uh, it was, tight. Was, there, was there a crowd? Yeah, okay. So there was a crowd. It was a f- packed house. And Sick. then, then okay. there were some things that happened in the in the... The handshake and it turned into a bit of a like a brawl, a bit of a brawl. What? Yeah, Come and on, uh, it was silly. Was um, Herbert Santos here? There, Herbert <laughs> Santos. No. To... Some guys that sounded like him, but <laughs> no, but yeah. It was, anyway, it, Corey's like, I'm not getting into that. I, I don't want to get into it because I, I promised that I wouldn't bring it back up. So yeah, I'm gonna okay, try okay, to like so, so leave it out. Good. Like, cause yeah. And the promoters are cool. Rory's a cool guy. He was a uh, uh, very Understanding, uh, a very understanding of the situation, yeah. and uh, it's anyway. Uh, shit, shit, people get heated, and shit happens. Yeah, and for sure. Usually, yeah. it, it, it's if, all. It's all. People it, were excited and fired up to compete. Let's yeah. put it that way. And if you're, if you're the one doing like what and it's happening, it's it's because you lost your pool. So like, it's all good. <laughs> Whatever, man. I'm just happy to hear that it was packed. There was a vibe. People was were fun. enjoying it, and it was, it was super fun. fun. Sure. Super fun. Something about competing with your team. I can't wait to try. I, it. I haven't done it. Yeah, well, you were you were a time. soccer player, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. dude, it's it's so nice to have ten other guys, ten of your friends on the field when you're yeah. about to start. Yeah. You have this like I don't know. It's like a it's a drive. You know, it's it's yeah. nice. And it's like the the it's not that there aren't nerves, but the nerves are different. Like like when you're on your own, it's like. It's all you about get, you. You get in your head. Yeah, yeah, you know? it's about you. It's all about you. When it's with my friends, it's like, I just got to do good for my friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, and, and, and that's everybody supporting your reason, yeah. yeah. And it's like, you can, you know, team sports, I, I played hockey for a while. I, just like soccer, it's like, uh, everybody has a responsibility. Yeah, you have a team, role. So you're not alone. No. So you can like, yeah, everybody has a role. So like, I would never go into a super fight going like, all right, I got to like, survive this to get to this overtime like i'm no. always thinking of trying to sub the guy but if i'm in a quintet it's i'll like, I'll do whatever the coach tells me is the win. best way for the team to win yeah, yeah you know because it's and what it is it's just nice like you're driving with your friends yeah you get to the Sorry. event you get there and everybody's like amped up well at this one we like so we drove there the day up so we drove seven hours oh, oh. that day <laughs> oh my god we had uh we had their team walk by us and uh in the bit uh, the the warm-ups of warm-up we were in the parking lot playing with a frisbee and some footballs and stuff that we picked up at the yeah, just chilling. at the store to to warm up yeah but to do it in a way that was relaxing yeah. you know and then we had some guys walk by and go like gay <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah yeah so it was a perfect day because we went there and they thought we were children and we won you know so yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it, awesome it was a, that's it was a cool day that's one thing about 10th planet in general i find the regardless of the results most of the guys from that team affiliation always come back Come back and compete. Come back, put it on the line, no matter what the result is. That's something well, I think you got to respect, op- man. You know? I think it's an open culture. Like, like, we're, and again, like, this isn't. I'm not a super, super, super tribal person. Um, I think that like your community that you surround yourself with, you're going to be the closest with them because you're with them. You know, it's yeah, it's proximity. But mm-hmm. um, what I do like. And I'm sure if I belong to a different affiliation, I'd have different things that I liked about that affiliation. But what I like about Tenth is the openness. Like I'm, I don't even like fit in maybe as well as as some of because it's like a it's like an, a team of outcasts sort of, right? Yeah, I know what you mean. And like I'm kind of vanilla, you know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. you're you're not like the uh... like I my jujitsu is so basic and my approach is so basic, but. Um, I like that I was open to do what I wanted to do. Like that, that, yeah, and, and even if I chose to do not what everyone else chose to do, it's still li- fine. I liked that approach, and it was cool that they were like, "Yeah, you want to do that, you do that." So I, th- I think that that like, if you ever heard Eddie talk about bowing, it was it was a pretty funny interview. He's getting grilled on do do you do you tell people to bow, and he's like, "Oh no, I don't tell people to bow, man," because like, and he stops and he's like, "Well, you know, actually, it's not so bad because like, uh, you know, it shows respect." He goes, 
Maybe I'll tell people to bow. <laughs> then he goes, but then I got to tell them to bow, and then I'm a dick. So I'm not going to do that. And you, you just see the process, and I'm like, <laughs> thinking about it. yeah, but <laughs> what's cool is that there are constraints, and they're, they, they, like, not everything goes smoothly. You can't have it all. You yeah, can't yeah. have the, the perfect structure you want and the openness you want. It's a balance, and every association does it differently, and you just got to find the place that fits you. Yeah, I like, I, I, I like the openness. For me, open, open, openness in the gym. Like, TriStar, we're lucky. It's pretty open, too. So More than I think people would think. Yeah, yeah. You it's know? not very traditional in the way we're learning. No, for and us, Hanzo, it's pretty... Hanzo's the same. Like, we don't, like... Like, we shake John's hands, but even that was never a requirement. It's actually, yeah. like, people started doing it. They just did it on their yeah, own. John's probably like, fuck. I got, a, <laughs> 100, I got 120 people in the class. 120 sweaty hands. Yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, he seems like the type that probably wouldn't want to interact with 120. <laughs> not, really, not really, exactly. He looks pretty open, too. Yeah. Pretty, pretty open. We can have up to, what, five, six teams on the mat for people yeah. from different teams at uh, one open mat. That's also studio, one. Yeah. yeah, I like... Absolutely. Here? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, dude, I mean... Dude. The open mat sure. on Wednesday is sure. like, you get people from like, yeah. the, uh, the other day we did the, was it like a day before, was it Tuesday? So on the 31st, right before. Uh, like a New Year's Eve open mat. Yeah, exactly. And there was like people from BTT, TriStar, mm-hmm. Mizu, uh, Revolution, probably some 10 H2O. Guys. I think it's, a, I think H2O, it's an awesome yeah. thing. It's yeah. so cool. It's awesome. Just it's like sick, man. everybody from Montreal just like getting in and getting some rooms. Yeah, and think about, like, so think about jujitsu. like, I think because it's a fight, and it's not even really, but, like, it's mimicking a fight, you know? Yeah. Mm. I think that it's easy to bring in those those thoughts of, like, like everyone's your competition sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, But really, it's, like, it's a puzzle game. It is. So, and you can't get good without them, you know yeah, what you I mean? Need, you need those partners. Yeah, right? like, think about playing video games, yeah. right? Like, you play video games with all kinds of people. You're intensely competitive while you're playing, and then yeah. you're fine all the rest of the time. Yeah. And, like, I think the more that we can replicate that, the better everyone gets. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. yeah. And uh, just speaking of openness, like 10 Planet, I've been to an open mat once. Or yeah, yeah. You guys, yeah. you guys were super welcome. Everyone's just welcome. Happy yeah. like, to, to have me around. So I was always like... People were super excited. Yeah. That's sick. Yeah. So tell me about the, the location of your school right now. I heard you've been bouncing around. You've had yeah. some trouble with that. What's <laughs> so the deal with that? We were in Verdun and we had a very large location in Verdun, uh, like 4,000 square feet. And uh, we're done gentrifying very quickly. So people are purchasing buildings. In the summer, right? Right. So the building got bought. They wanted to repurpose the building. So we kind of got pushed out, which was unfortunate. Um, But we moved right downtown onto like uh, 1827 St. Catherine Street. So right near uh, St. Catherine and St. Mark. Very downtown. Yeah, very downtown. Like the uh, St. Matthew exit for uh, Guy Concordia is... Like, you can throw a tennis ball from there to our gym. So, Damn. so you're basically Metro Guy Concordia. Damn. Right Fair next enough. to university. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. days. That's convenient. So, yeah, so for location, location if wise, you're not is. parking, it's great. What about <laughs> the Metro, what great. about the mat space? Because you guys had a pretty big mat That's space. the only thing. We lost We lost the, uh, a bit of the mat space, so we doubled the schedule. Okay, that was yeah. Like kind of how we dealt with it. That, you know? That's smart. That you know why that's smart because you're close to a school, a university. Day and morning classes can can Day, work there. Morning, you know? ten, yeah. eleven. I think the the weirdest times you might have a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, I, I'm not like the jujitsu market here is is actually it's growing. It's it's not small. I'm not gonna say it's big, but it's not small. No, and it's growing. Sure. And like, there's gonna. Right now, I think there's something like 34 or 35 jiu-jitsu schools in Montreal, right? Wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah. But in, I would have think like maybe 20 or something. 30, 35? Wow. Yeah. But like m- many of those probably aren't like, I don't, I'm not calling anyone out. There's there's definitely going to be some that are legit and some that aren't. Yeah, and, yeah and for sure. It's legit just means yeah. the coaches that take their job seriously. Yeah, That's yeah, all yeah, I mean exactly. by that, you know? Yeah. And I think, like in ten years, all those jo- all those coaches that take their jobs seriously, I think all those schools will still be here, and I think yeah. they'll be even bigger. Hundred percent. Other yeah, ones won't, absolutely. and maybe some of the Taekwondo ones. Yeah. Won't. Well, it's it's a there's there's a it's a market, right? So there's competition mm-hmm. in a certain way, and that means being legit, doing your mm-hmm. your job, uh, marketing, all that stuff. Man, the example I always use is like the restaurants here, like yeah. on the, on Notre Dame. We have four or five Mexican restaurants, yeah. like right next to each other, and they're still in business. How many how many people do we have in Montreal? Uh, what's one, the population? One point seven million on the island. Yeah, yeah on the island. Yeah. Man, I mean, there's I don't think it's it's like Val was telling me the other day. He he went to Checkmat in California, 
and right across the street, there's mm -hmm. another school, and they're both doing just fine. Well, San, San Diego has maybe more jujitsu schools per capita than like anywhere in the world. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's crazy. And they're right. all they're all fucking full. And Keenan just moved there. Yeah, yeah, he did. Don't tell me he didn't do some sort of analysis. He knows. He knows it's fine. School, he's probably Keenan, like, he's gonna be fine. But. Yeah, he's Keenan too, so he's probably fine too. But but, <laughs> but for sure, he, he made some. He, he chose his location. There, there's people like. Jiu-Jitsu is filling a need that, like, that our society has. It's not like the. What does that mean? You think? Um. Well, I think it's uh, if I one word to be like uh, connection. You yeah. know, people are isolated. You know, uh, so they're connecting true. themselves. You know, when I noticed that, while I was going through uh, rehab for my leg, and then I'd hit the gym, Gold's Gym. Yeah. I mean, nothing against gyms in general, but man, you walk in and you barely look at people and you give them like a little nod. It's or not like, the same. Hey, what's up? It's like basically grabbing a can of Coke, you drink it and you throw it out. It's mm. like a product. Here, it's mm. a yeah. different thing. Man. Totally. Well, when you have to aggressively totally. hug your partner, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll get to know them. You know well, what I mean? <laughs> I don't like rolling with people who I don't love. Oh, yeah, you know what I, I mean, what and I'm mean, still yeah. trying to kill you. It's, that's yeah. the game. I like rough yeah. games, or I wouldn't play oh, this. Oh, yeah, for sure, for you sure. You know, but that's a that's a good way to. If I don't it. Like, like you, I'm not gonna try to roll with you very much. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, we all have some people we don't want to roll of course. with. I we all know. Like, I have some guys that I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get injured and shit like that. So you're like, you stay away, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but like some partners that you're used to and you you like to roll because you know it's gonna be a fucking war and it's gonna be hard training. The best. Well, that's what you like, yeah, and. It's not only for hardcore people. Like, uh, no, it's not. No, because right. because what's the percentage of people that are not competing actively, that are not professional in the gym? Ninety nine percent. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So all these people are just regular guys and girls with like uh, jobs, mm -hmm. and they just want to connect, like you said, and they want to like get better at, at a skill. But that, and that's the thing too is like the getting better part. Like. There's a purpose to that, and it's. Um, I think it's important not to get lost in like you're just getting better to be a world champion. Like, no, you're sure. gonna feel very empty even if you achieved that goal. If that was it, yeah, you know, exactly. like yeah. like not that that's not a great goal for a competitor. Of course, it's the best. But I think what I'm trying to say is that that ultimately you want to progress because you progression is what you're addicted to. So that's the second word that I would come to. It's I think connection is the number one. And I think the number two is progression. Yes. We're wired to be improving at things, to be getting better at things, to be solving problems. And I think if you're doing that, you have like a purpose to your life. Mm -hmm. It it cleans things up for you, man. Like of it, course, yeah. it makes you happy. Absolutely. You can win and then it's like getting a new car. You can get bored of it. Um, sure. You can forget about it. So you need something to keep you going. Mm -hmm. uh, like let's say you, you win you win a tournament, you get that gold medal. We, I think we can all agree. Right after getting it, you're like, all right, whatever. You don't care about it anymore. No, I, I feel... You're happy. You're happy. You honestly, won. I feel more relieved than happy. Yeah, almost. Yeah. It's you're more just like, like, all right, work is done. <laughs> but after I'm like, I, like I, I'm happy for sure, but there's always another one. I, another thing. It's how your brain on. works. Yeah, right? yeah, you're exactly. right on so, to that next so challenge. There has to like, be more than just trying to win everything. Or else you're just and, unsatisfied all the yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's no finish line. I'm way No, more, there yeah, is. There exactly. is none. There is. So there's way more fun in in just like I don't know, communicating, teaching with people. Yeah. Teaching is amazing for that. I love mm -hmm. teaching because of that. Because mm -hmm. you see, you get a feedback right away of someone who's learning something. They love it. You know when they're like like, oh my God. You just showed a meme. It's the best movement. feeling in the world. Yeah. And they loved it. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, think like what's more satisfying to you? Because like for me, like I do love winning a gold medal, but I'll tell you what, like like one and like coaching aside, because that's the most satisfying to me is coaching. But when I'm like I'm for per personally, when I'm like uh flow charting my game out and there's like been a hole that I didn't know was there. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I've been running into a, a sticking point with a move. And then I find a maneuver that like naturally fits my game and solves that problem. Patch. A patch. Yeah. It's like that patch. to me, that feeling is the single most like selfish um, satisfaction that I get from anything in the yes. entire world. Yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. Like solving a problem in your game and then applying it in life situation. That is Addic pretty satisfying. Addictive. Yeah. Absolutely addictive. That's why we're still yeah. all doing jujitsu. Yeah, right that's exact. But that's my point. So if you connect yeah. to people and you're progressing in that way. You're never gonna stop having fun. You're gonna have fun the whole time, mm -hmm. for sure. Because that patch, somebody's gonna figure out a way to take it out, and then you gotta have find another a, one. A stronger patch, yeah, and exactly. a stronger, and it doesn't stop. You it know, never I mean? stops. Man. It's good. Every good. time you compete, 
something might happen and you're mm. like, oh, I got to patch this. Yeah. Even if you're training with, with teammates in, in general, a guy's going to, hey, this guy caught me the same way four or five times. What the hell is it? Yeah. And you yeah. think about it and then it's just this progression that doesn't stop. Yeah. And it pisses you off on the spot sometimes. Mm. You're like, oh, like. Why, to the point where you make mistakes. Getting, yeah. But why am I getting catch in this shit? Yeah. And then you got to figure it out. That's the only way. You cannot run away from your problem. No, because you don't get better. Like, no, I, exactly. I tell this to students a lot that, like, because I know, like, students that are athletic will often learn, let's say, to, like, do a shitty Toriana to pass the guard, and then they'll just try side-to-side -side movement forever, which, is, I mean, you got to have your speed passing. I'm of not course. saying you shouldn't. But, like, I, I'm, I'll try to make the point to them that, like, you're afraid to sustain pressure on this this guard because you know that there's a cost to entry. You're going like to get for, caught. Yeah. You, for you to ever be able to stand in there more than 10 seconds, there's a cost. Of you course, will yeah. have to get, you have to put your taps in or else you will never learn that. Man, especially mm. if you run into a flexible 10th planet guy, pressuring him is probably the worst thing you can do. That leg is going to come over really yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. You're going to end up in some meatball sandwich. <laughs> well, that's like move or some gut wrench. Boogie's like that. Boogie's yeah. one of the those dudes that like, yeah, he, he, the way he plays guard is like he'll like push you away with his feet, so you're either too far, or you're too close. Yeah, yeah. You know, like if you come in real deep, he's looking for that rubber guard and he'll throw oh, that up yeah. on you. Oh, rubber like, guard. Yeah, he he's real good with. Uh, he's very flexible, isn't he? Very flexible, and it's like in the early days, like Eddie's approach was very like uh, methodical, step by step. But nowadays, you see a little bit more success from uh, some of these guys that fight to win pro with rubber guard because they're using it in a more streamlined fashion. Like. Yeah. They're throwing the leg over, going right into an oma platter. They're not like trying to hold you step by step forever because yeah, yeah, yeah. you can't control a good athlete. Yeah, but that's evolution. Right? Yeah. It's just evolution. Yeah, and they're making it work, which is cool. Of course, it is. It is a pretty pretty decent style, man. For no, I'll game, blow man. my knee out if I use it, and that's I'm, I'm, I'm the same dude. No, yeah. no way, my legs coming yeah, out no, and around but, like that. But I've rolled with like uh, with Boogie, Kyle Chambers, and those guys use it pretty pretty effectively. How yeah. often do you go down there? Um. In the, I've been like once a year for the past three years. Nice. Yeah. Once a year. Yeah, I'd like to go more, but that's it. It's expensive. That's far. It's pretty far. It's expensive. Pretty expensive yeah. Yeah. If you can time it with a comp, I think that's what I. Yeah. That's what I try to. Or do. Uh, or yeah. seminars maybe. I've seen I've seen some stuff about seminars and you. Well, like, I uh, yeah, I teach a lot. I've, yeah. I've been lucky. Like I know everyone says like I'm a better coach than a competitor, but like I'm a far better coach than a competitor. Like I'm I'm a good I'm a good competitor, and I'm working to be yeah. as good as I can. But I picked up. Mm -hmm. I started training full time at thirty. Oh yeah, did you? Hey, yeah, for twenty nine. Wow. 29 so like the area where i always saw that i could could progress the most for the longest teaching would be teaching and i had a background in teaching and i had a background in research methods so it made sense for me to yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, weren't you in amsterdam at some point i yeah, thought so, i saw your name on yeah. the the uh, camp in amsterdam how was I, that i did the one last year and i'm doing it again this this year i had john jock machado's on the card which is like crazy when you wow. see your face on a card with a guy like that it's like so I, cool you know you don't deserve it and you're just happy to nah it's, <laughs> if you're there you deserve it yeah but you know what it i mean matter. like like yeah, yeah i know it's, what you it's mean, a crazy bro. thing it's a crazy feeling wagner was on wagner was there same time as you guys aren't you yeah. aren't you on a so we'll, we'll get to that too but yeah so i'm gonna be on the amsterdam card with uh with Imanari and uh and that's 10th planet amsterdam that runs out you guys know raul yeah of course, course, yeah. course yeah. he's a super super kind so guy cool, yeah. yeah and and he actually came down and competed with us so yeah, he came down yeah. to train he, he came, came to tristar too yeah so he went to the quintet in um uh, in ontario and he subbed the whole team nice yeah and then he went to finishers and he he fought uh jeff napoli who's like a pretty decent purple belt from new york and, okay, yeah. and he subbed him in like 20 seconds so, wow. so it was cool for raul because yeah, for he sure. he hadn't had that kind of competitive success i mean and, and coming from like europe it's, like it's traveling stressful. from europe to, yeah. to go and compete and there. having good results is it was cool yeah, dude good. i remember yeah. raul once i did a comp in kaiser slaughter matrix yeah okay and oh, yeah. the poor guy he filled in literally the day before and he drove from Amsterdam to Kaiserslautern. It's basically an hour south from Frankfurt. Okay. So he went down a lot. He mm. drove and then got subbed every match. Then he was like super discouraged. And now look at him. Well, now he's getting to a now point where he's traveling. And he's I remember him it. coming to me and being like, okay, I don't know if I should push this goal or not. He goes, I want to try to win the ADCC trials. I'm like, well, what the fuck else are you going to do? Of course you're going to push that goal. You, like, you're good and you're twice as good as you were last time I met you. So yeah. maybe next time I meet you, you'll be twice as good as you are now. He's putting in. He's doing line. good, man. Yeah. When I roll with him, he felt he felt his game felt a lot tighter. Well, he's very, very dangerous, like open guard 
looking for inside heel. Like he, em he emulates your style quite a bit. Man, he, I know? trained with him a lot. Yeah. When I went down to Amsterdam, he came to every single one of my classes. He's he's nasty with that back step that you learned from you. You know, Fuck, like he's, yeah. that's where he's real that's strong. Cool. That's cool. I'm see, super man. careful. Yeah, yeah, back step is my favorite, my number one move. Oh, yeah. We know that. My <laughs> best move my, from everywhere. Top, bottom, inverting. I, I back step on I, everything. I know because I did a film breakdown on you three years ago. Did you? Oh, I sick. Did. Where is it? Yeah, it's on YouTube, man. Is it? Really? Yeah, you know the, the 23 minute. DDS leg lock breakdown. Oh, yeah. oh is, is, that, that you? Yeah, is that you? Oh, that, yeah. you legend. <laughs> Dog, that's so cool, man. I did that before the leg lock that. DVD came out, though. So if I made any errors, that's on. No, man, it's cool. It's cool. Well, that's, it's cool that you yeah. went out there and do it. Like, fuck, that's so cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was a little obsessive, though, because, like I said, it's 23 minutes. So it's. So, yeah, well, but I mean, at the time, we, we couldn't get that fucking information at the yeah, time. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. Like, for uh, for you guys that are on the inside of that school, you got it. But yeah. for other people that were no instructional, you, you have to figure it out. You have to break down film. You have to yeah. break down film. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the only way. Yeah. 100%. Sure. So. Even people on the inside, some people that train there, uh, for some reason, don't pick it up. I'm not saying they don't have access to it. They just don't pick it up. They're just yeah. there daily, just, <laughs> just <laughs> well, attending, uh, attending class, but just check. zoned out, spaced out. On the, yeah. on the handle card, check. check. <laughs> yeah. well, so I was like, I was watching film Bro. a lot on like Eddie and on Gordon, but like with, it, it was the most useful film study I actually had were like probably you three. And that's because you were uh, like, you were learning it from them at the time. So, like, when somebody mm -hmm. has, like, someone like Gordon, right? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a little bit harder to parse out uh, the coaching from him because yeah. he's so developed. Yeah. Right? Yeah, exactly. But when you get guys that are really good and they're, like, three or four years into the game, like Nikki. Yeah. You know, like, when you watch Nikki three or four years ago, you can parse out exactly what he's being coached. Because oh, yeah. he's only doing what he's being coached. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, at that mean. time in his yeah, game. He's, I'm he's, sure he's, now it's more far now, harder to see. It's because... Because when the development is not at the, at the highest point, like now he can choose whatever he wants to do. Exactly. But back then, if you know, let's say, 10 good moves, you're mm -hmm. going to rely on the 10 good moves. You know? Yeah. They all have patterns. Mm -hmm. So like when this I wanted, guy has a really good backstep. But that's so, what I mean. When I wanted to learn the the, the backstep from yeah. and from the guard too, like yeah, from, from different bottom, positions, because yeah. I know you use it well from everywhere. Mm -hmm. I just watched a guy who I saw doing it to everybody over and over and over and over. You know? And that's, that's the smart. easiest way to, to that's flesh smart. out that information. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I picked up a lot of little details also from Craig during ADCC camp with his long ass arms, long ass fingers. Oh, the monster, Craig. the monster. Yeah. It's just, it's sick to be able to train with the uh, with yeah, a guy like him. Man, it's very cool on a daily basis with Gordon with everything. But you gotta know how to how to improve when you're surrounded by these guys. You can't yeah. just. I mean, obviously, if you roll with them on a daily basis, you're gonna get better. But you yeah. gotta you yeah. gotta come prepared. You gotta know what you want to work on. You want to know what to ask them. You want to remember what you got caught with, yeah. what you tried, how they caught you. You got to do your work too because they're just not going to come up to you and be like, hey, do this, do that. No, you can't no. expect to just like, just become like really good because you were there. You need to be there and You can't go through the motions. Yeah, 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 well, I mean, like, think about it. Like, like, too, and I know from my students because some of them will make choices during a role with me that like result in them getting tapped a little quicker than they would have if they were just framing. Yeah, yeah. You know? But they had to do that, or else they'll never improve. Yeah, like sure. like if you go, I'm sure if you roll with the guys that, that are the the best in that room, if you're just defending, just framing, just trying to create space, right? You could probably survive the longest in that round. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you're not better tomorrow as much as if you had been like, all right, I'm gonna try to use this window to hit something, yeah. and then I'll know exactly. Try to get your move. You gotta work. See the counter, like you said. You gotta put the work. Uh, and I had a couple of stalemates with these guys during ADCC camp, yes. and then I was just pissed at myself. I'm like, man, what? The I didn't do anything. Like I was just there framing. I, I know they're trying to body lock me, so I wouldn't sit up. I know they're trying to pass me that way, so I wouldn't do this. But man, in the gym, it's it's good to try to find ways yeah. around what's, it. What's the difference? Trying not to lose versus trying to win. You know the difference? Totally. This is this is and and I'm like I had the same issue. Like at Worlds, that was my second my second match was that I was trying not to lose. Yeah. yeah. And that was a stalemate because I'm like I don't want to get past, but I can't fucking sweep him. Mm. Well, you got to get up and do something. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. So like, well, and in the gym, you should be trying to explore. Worst case scenario, you get tapped. Improvement mindset, right? Yeah, like, you're yeah, not just trying to survive this round. You're trying to get better You lose today. that. Sometimes you lose that See, mindset. Ego gets in the way of yeah, all exactly. of us. There's no way. Like, when I go into a new, or like, if I drop in at Henzo's, for sure, in my head, it's like, just gauge how well you can do against some of these guys today. Yeah, exactly. But then if I'm coming back tomorrow, that wouldn't be the right mindset to have. No. I'd have mm. to be like, all right, you need to do yeah. better than you did yesterday or at least fail trying to yeah, do better exactly. than you did yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's hard because we all have ego. Yeah, and we're mm. all thinking, I'm trying to win 
all the uh, time. All the time. Instead of like trying shit out. One of the best guy, Gary Tonin at that. Boy. Dude, Dude. Gary, <laughs> just you hear him across the room like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. Screaming. I've, I've, I've rolled with Gary and yeah. uh, there's n nobody fucked with my head more. Yeah, of course. Because like I started the role thinking like, oh, damn, you're good. Because like I, I remember like I like arm dragged him, took his back. And and like he just was giving me things to set up subs. And I was like, man, you really play it close to the chest, dude. Like, dude. Mm -hmm. Incredible. He's, he's, I think my favorite training partner. There's so many moves that happen in one round with him. So many situation, weird place where you have to improvise so it must be so much information you just can't get anywhere else yeah you know i mean pretty, you're rolling with a, such a unique sick. guy yeah, yeah he's, it's pretty sick there was the guy what's his name that won uh in my division brown belt 10th planet guy what's his oh name? alan sanchez he is good yeah, yeah. Dude, i was so surprised i, I was like <laughs> I'm so reckless i watched yeah no i watched his <laughs> match insane. against the guy that i lost to and then he was down on points and then just opens up the game and opens up he's let like, him come up whatever. bait gets a sub And I was like, man, that's more my kind of game. You know, if yeah, I would have exactly. opened up that way and I just well, compete the way I actually like to train, which is just open up, scrambles, even if you're down on point, look for subs, just get like a high-paced, interesting match, which is I mean, what I like. Your match with Canuto was fucking amazing. Uh, yeah. nah, I mean, of course. Yeah, of course, yeah. it's a loss. You're a competitor. You're like, uh, but what I'm saying is like, like after Gary's, like Gary had a match with him, I think that was like considered the best of the tournament. Yeah. That, That match was one of the sickest matches that I, I saw in the whole I tournament. It. I agree. it was so, a lot of move, man. It was moving. I know? appreciate it. I appreciate it. And then I, I appreciate it, but deep down, I'm pretty disappointed, obviously. Course, I'll, I'll tell you honestly. You want to win, man. It could have been better. Well. could have been sharper. And it's ADCC. But it's ADCC. Yeah, man. Looking at uh, Alan Sanchez just kind of reminded me, like, man, that's more my style than just sitting there and, and sitting on my ass and looking at advantages and points. And you got to do a tiny bit of it, but man, it's... At the it, end of the day, people are going to watch your matches and, and be like, oh, Gary Tonin's a fucking sick grappler. Why? Because he at his takes match. risk all the fucking mm -hmm. time. Yeah. It's so these, sick. I think these matches, to me, mean a lot well, more. Well, I mean, listen, like, edging like, it out. I, like, and we all have to do it differently, right? So, like, if I trade the way Alan Sanchez trades or Gary, I'm going to lose every match. Not every match, but like almost well, every Maybe match. it's not necessarily your style. But it doesn't mean I can't, like, what I take from it is, like, I try to pressure with that same mindset okay yeah you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. i'm gonna put pressure on you going the whole it. match like i'm gonna go for it the whole match i may not change positions as much because i'm not as nimble you know yeah but i'm not going to sit on my knees and just disengage the whole match like that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. kind of stuff that is a way to me it's a waste of time it's just a waste you're wasting everybody's time yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's definitely and, you know, not important you know what just saying uh, about alan like uh seeing that and being like hey, that's that's all i should do Like, that's why I was frustrated, too, after my last loss. I was like, I shouldn't be, like, waiting for something. I should be like, mm -hmm. okay, go. Worst case scenario, you lose, but you gave everything, you know? Mm -hmm. So at least, like, and then you take away from it. Technically, you can always take away from something from it. But yeah, if you give your 100%. You don't, you know what's funny? Like, we we're talking, because now we're kind of talking about performance mindset, yeah. right? And, like, I find it very interesting that, The thing that you fear, I mean, you fear the the burnout too. We have like a deep fear of getting too tired, right? But if you warm up good, that's probably not a huge factor anymore if you're if you're training hard. Yes. And I think that the then the next thing with our nerves is like, am I gonna try my best? Because yeah. if I don't try my best, if I take this easy, I in deep down I feel like it'd be easier to take a loss that way, but it's not. It's a trick no, your brain plays on you. It's worse. You know, because you're going to lose for sure that way. And you're going to know that you didn't yeah. give your all and you're going to hate yourself. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the worst, man. What you're afraid of, which is giving your absolute all and losing, is actually not that it's bad. When better. you do it, you're yeah. like, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's actually better. But it just shows how it's a mental game. It's a mental like, game. At the end of the day, if, you mm -hmm. have, if you've done your preparation right, it's all a mental game. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Corey, question for you. If you had to go back... And you've been training how many years now? Uh, we're going to be eight next week. Eight Sick. next week. Well, happy Jiu-Jitsu anniversary. <laughs> yeah. well, if you had to give yourself an advice eight years ago, what would it be? Oof. Um, it would probably be like most of what we've been talking about in that like, like my first two years were spent too, way too much trying to win as opposed to trying to 
get better for, for fun too, because like it's all the same. Like mm. like getting better, having fun, getting results, they're the same. It's all linked. It's Connect. linked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you are focused on your progression, you will have fun and you will get results. So yeah. instead of focusing on outcomes, like situational awareness, just focus on the task at hand and getting better at dealing with the task at hand all the time. Yeah. And then you're stuck in that flow state. And that's really what you want is a break from the world, yeah, right? Definitely. You want to be stuck in that flow state. So. Yeah, yeah. You want to enjoy yourself. Yeah, so I, I think that's With probably... difficulty and learning. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, with difficulty. You need, you need difficulty yeah. to enjoy it. Otherwise, it's it's boring. I yeah, can, it's boring. I can yeah. kind of relate to that. Um, I think same. we can all do. Yeah. 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 When you start, you want to be that guy who learned it fast, who got better really quick. You're Superman. You're going to learn it better than everyone. But instead, if you can enjoy it and take like take your time and really just enjoy the ride and every step of the way, I think you'll you'll get a lot more out of it in general. Yeah, I mean, you, and definitely, it's the perspectives are different too. Like you were someone like you guys got good really fast. You know what I mean? Both yeah. of you guys. No, we were trying. That's really? exactly. I was trying I to you live were. up no, to that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, yeah. Sure. You don't get that good not trying. It comes out of price, though. It comes out of price. For sure. ACL. Yeah. <laughs> ACL, <laughs> but attention that maybe you don't want. Attention or like a spit of spotlight or yeah. people have your eyes on you. Don't Maybe necessarily you just want to go out and get maybe the experience. You don't, you don't need it. Like when you compete, you don't want it. Like if you, because I, I wouldn't say for me, but like for you, you had a bit more attention. Maybe when you go out and compete, you're like, you're pressuring yourself mm. because you're, People have expectation, but that's in your head, obviously. Yeah. And people have expectation of you. Mm. Like instead of just going and having fun, like we just said, like like connecting your I'm giving my best, whatever the outcome. And but I think we're learning that right now. Yeah, yeah well, ne I mean, listen, for and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but like because no, you you you're one of those guys that's like in the spotlight very much, you know? Yeah. And from from a really early point in your career. Yeah. Right? And as a young man. Those are all things that, like, not everybody deals with. Like, people say a lot about Gordon, you know? And it's like, my answer is always the same. I'm like, Gordon's a superstar, and he's, like, 20. He's a kid. He's yeah. 23, you I know? Think, yeah. And, I mean, in jiu-jitsu, he's, he's ancient in terms of his knowledge, right? But but in terms of being a human, you're still a kid. Uh -huh. And I'm not, I don't mean that in an insulting way. It's what like, I mean is that, like, you're dealing with things that adults, people that are 40, have trouble dealing with. Mm. And you still haven't made your decisions on what you want to be, who you want to be, you know? Damn. Like, so... Like I think, like you're you. I think you guys have handled it well. It's not an easy thing to handle, and I see like you now with like your teaching and the podcast. Like I feel like you're probably trying to grow more into your own role. Like decide who you want to be and like yeah. be that guy as an athlete. That's cool. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You man. Know, you're not like just being what your coaches tell you or whatever. You're you're Oliver. Yeah, trying to enjoy yeah. it more and uh, and just yeah, that's be yourself. It. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, another so, thing I, I've realized over uh, like the maybe less like year or two and with injuries and all, all the all the stuff that I brought like training hard and all that stuff you realize that I know you hear that often it's almost a cliche but it's not a race in the sense where <laughs> no. I'm realizing I'm like oh I probably have like minimum 10 years of, of competition we, you're I'm, how old? I'm 26 and you're 26 Six, as same well? thing same thing yeah. same age. so okay. we, we have at least I started jujitsu at your age Six. dang that's amazing so like and you guys have already achieved so much like <laughs> Val, what, what, yeah, Val's just what like, you fuck start? you guys. What age did you start? 40? You're not. No, you're 41. It's 30, 39, this guy? 30, uh, there we go, 40 see. this year. Damn. Yeah. He's Legend. a beast, though. And he's a beast. Doesn't roll and he's not juicing. At all. There's no... I don't know, actually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's the Soviet tank. He <laughs> might be on some uh, old uh, Soviet... Some Pavel Tatsulin made <laughs> protein that just turns you into a savage. That, no, that but strength. That's a good example. Val is right here. He open up the school. He's actively like competing. You too. You're running a this school. He works his ass yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm 26. I'm like realizing, like I said, minimum, I have 10 years. You're already minimum. ahead. So, you guys are already ahead. <laughs> so not to say I, I, I got to work less. No, but I got to keep going. Sustainability so, is more so important than, than. Yeah. That's yeah. the thing. That's me. The reason why this is all happening is I want to stay in the game. Yeah. Man. I don't want to like keep getting injured yeah. and disappear and come back and I just want to have a like a sustainable way of keep getting better at a steady pace that's not going to jeopardize my financial situation, mm. my health, my relationship with people, my because that affects your ability to ultimately do what it is you want to do long yeah. term. Yeah. Like I had a student tell me this uh recent a friend and a student he's like, "Man, he's like, you know, you did all those competitions the last two years and I'm going to still compete very actively, but I'm going to be a little bit more careful moving forward in terms of my scheduling because um Like you, like exactly what you said. You, you don't want to do have a people remember you as like, oh, you had a great year. Yeah, 
You know what I mean? You want to be like a fixture in the sport for as long yeah. as you can be in the you sport. Had a great That's, decade. A good career, like, yeah, yeah, good career. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not like that's awesome. So I agree with you. I think that's the, sm- yeah. the smart play. Fuck, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, and it's like like going back to it. It's not a race. It's like the best example is like when you start and you're like you're com- competing. You're like, okay, I want to be that like prodigy that like in five years you're like mm-hmm. like you know a Gordon kind of. Mm-hmm. But you realize it's that's not the end goal. The end goal is getting better. Uh, forever. Enjoying yourself mm-hmm. and forever, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. As long as you can, I as long as your be, body allows yeah, you to. Yeah, exactly. So, damn, I think I think that's a good place to wrap it, man. All right, yeah, the good, yeah, the yeah. good thoughts to to wrap it, and I think uh, we've made a good point. You know, I think we can all relate to the same to the same uh, idea. Take your time, enjoy it, stay in the game mm-hmm. for a while. Such so, a great podcast, man. It, like it was really good having you, Corey. I, th- I had a great time. To be honest, I think we could go on for like three hours. Yeah, like, I mean, we're talking know. about stuff that we all relate. I mean, dude, this guy's like, <laughs> <laughs> like <"I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's got a wife and kids and, and a full time job. <laughs> yeah. Vals is actually coding right now. He's he's working on a job as as he's. Recording I actually the think he is. Yeah, he is with sure. his eyes. He's typing with his eyes. <laughs> I know. But one thing, I hope you don't mind. I'm just gonna plug that camp in Florida because I ahead. didn't yeah, mention I, that. I, I wanted um, to talk about that. Actually. So this is gonna be at Wagner Roche's gym and it's a, a pretty cool card you got wagner gilbert uh burns who's probably the most active dude, dude in, he's in amazing, combat man. sports period you know mm-hmm. like yeah. he's freaking, Killing it in too. between ufc fights does three or four super fights you know he's insane. sick and then there's the cyborgs on the card and so is boogie and so is john callistein and, uh, and yourself so, yeah yeah and, and i'm on there too so i'm lucky to be there and i'm happy and if you anyone wants uh to to make that card we got a special for canadians so hey up. really oh. yeah, yeah when is it this is going to be in february February what? Uh, it's not. It's in March. I'm terrible. Damn. <laughs> it's uh, the last week of March, so it's going to be March 22nd to 28th in, uh, we'll in talk about South it. Florida. Yeah, we'll talk about it. For I sure, might for I sure. might be on Polaris, but if I don't get a match, I'm coming. Hey, it's yeah, yeah. going to be a fun week. I, I might be down. Yeah. It's going to be a fun week. And those uh, guys are super, like, those fight sports guys are fun. Yeah. Like, they're intense. Seems, yeah, they're super intense Brazilian, sure. you know? Like, they love to dance and yeah. sing, and but... <laughs> My yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, but honestly, they're very welcoming. They train hard, and Sick. they're very kind people. So. Anything else you want to plug before we? Uh, Man, well, the, where our, can we our, reach you? You can well, uh, Instagram's tenth uh, tenth planet Montreal. That's so you. pretty simple. And uh, the new school's on St. Catherine, and and uh, and I'll be here for open mat as often as I can. I love training you guys. I haven't got yeah. the role Oliver yet, but obviously I know he's super. Nah, we're good, we're so. here, man. We're in Montreal. No <laughs> yeah, worries. Yeah. Uh, we're not too far. You're gonna <laughs> be sick it. and tired of rolling with me, and vice probably, versa. Probably real soon. Just like Pio and Val. Yeah, so exactly. no I'm stress. already sick of Pio taking my yeah. <laughs> done. Uh, all right, guys. All right, yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Before we log out, I just want to thank our sponsors. We got Scramble Canada, Scramble in general. Uh, in my opinion, sick gear. sick gear, but it's more quality. Also, like you can wear it for four or five years, and it's not gonna turn into a V neck. So you're good. <laughs> the color's gonna stay the same. Po doesn't even take that sweater off. Never no, that. Dude, so Never that. Man. We got you. we got roll forever. She's uh Betty Boo. We love you. Hooking up <laughs> athletes from uh, U.S. and slowly all over and the world. Obviously the, from Montreal myself. She's been helping me so much. Yeah, oh, yeah. big help, big help. Yeah. And then uh, she's only getting started. Things are gonna. Paul's gonna get rolling. She's helping with the event we're doing actually. Yeah, with the quintet. Quintet. Sarah, she's a sponsor. Yeah, oh, she's a good and, uh, sponsor. And hit me up if you want rash guards. I have roll forever rash guards in the basement. Hit him up. We you got. Know, you, but you have to go into the basement with them. Yeah, so. only if you go in the basement. <laughs> We got Kimura Soap all the way from Dirty Jers making clean soap. Make sure to clean up after you train, guys. Um, good soap. Honestly, you can dilute it. It's got tea tree oil in it. It's organic, cruelty-free uh, if you're into the environment and all that. All organic ingredients. I only support cruelty. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, all all of that. All the good stuff. Next up, we got Origin. Origin Labs. Good protein. Good supplements. Uh, good philosophy behind behind the company. Check them out. Uh, we got Physiomentum. I just got back from there. Physiomentum. I saw one morning. of your one of your teammates actually. Uh, Francis. He goes there, I believe. Good. He yeah, fucking I sent, needs I to sent go him, there. I sent him uh, there. <laughs> Like actually, because he, he had knee uh, surgery. Yeah, well, you've seen his legs. Can used to do a yeah. squat. So I told him, I Damn. said, yeah. yeah, go see Tom at Physio yeah. Mental. Tom, Tom did, but doesn't lift any weights. And uh, G, G man, yeah, running a amazing. tight ship. The guy is there. He, man, he's starting six today. He's finishing at I think eight thirty tonight. Just a savage. Yeah, they're amazing. That's, though. that's the kind of people I love to surround myself with because it just showed me how much I'm a bitch and I complain and I just keep pushing. <laughs> Next up, who am I forgetting? Give me a hand. Misa Studio. 
Of course. Mizu Studio, Valerio. Right there. Support Valerio. Yeah, Look, thank you listen, for having me. Family run business, uh, good values, open minded, super chill, and uh, just the best intentions behind everything we do. Yeah. Uh, make sure to subscribe and share. Let us know what you think. Let us know how we can improve and do better. Uh, we got Reddit account. What pardon? Uh, on Reddit, Reddit we're on Reddit yeah, yeah, as well. I post every Wednesday, but today was nice. Wednesday, but every Wednesday, there's a uh, everything goes on uh, Reddit BJJ. So Reddit's, you'll be there uh, next week. Yeah, I'll take a jump over from my incel forum. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Amazing. My wife's gonna kill me. Uh, it's okay. This. And that's she will. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Make Thank sure you. to subscribe and share and blow this up because. Yeah, we're trying to we're trying to reach as many people as possible. Yeah, thank and you, Corey, for coming. Thank you, Corey. Thank you guys Amazing. for having me. This is yeah, awesome. That was fun, man. And cool. then we look forward to seeing you on the mats, on the competition scene, crushing awesome. it. And that's it, guys. Safe in it. Thank you, guys. <laughs>